All right. Um, so I'm going to go through this. Um, I would like it if everybody would chime in, add anything that they see um, that should be added, and I'll I'll be making some notes here, and we'll uh, we'll go from there on you know making this something that we can pass out to guys that are juniors coming up and and working on getting towards the project planning stage of their uh, career. Um, so basically, as we get our sales order, we've got our initial planning that we've got to do. We're going to review. I don't know. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay. So we're going to review the sales order uh, for the correct information, um, as well as reviewing the sales and estimating sheet. And with that, you're going to be looking at the equipment list, the hours associated. Uh, something I should have added in here is another bullet point is looking at per diem and travel. Do we have everything covered that we need to? Um, we've got to review the drawings and the specifications. The specifications is the important part. Uh, there's multiple times where we get caught where we we haven't read the specification all the way and all of a sudden something comes up at the last second. We need a, a watt hour standard or we need a certain piece of test equipment um, that now we have to we have to rush getting it shipped out or we don't have the right manpower because we didn't think we were going to do MAC testing or we didn't think we were going to measure every single conductor or whatever the case is. Um, at that point, create a short list of questions for the client. Um, in those, it should always be looking at I know it's in our quotes to have power be available. It's really easy to skip that portion when we're when you're doing an estimate. So somebody may not have checked the box stating that we require single phase 480 if we're doing breakers, whatever the case is. Um, get those questions together and be ready, you know, to have more questions get added to that as you talk to the client. Um, you contact the client and review the project. Uh, I know I've heard a couple of guys when they make their calls, they basically say, you know, hey, we've got the sales order. What date works for you? And, you know, that, that'll that work sometimes. Um, my preference would be to contact the client after looking at our calendar and stating to them, hey, I've got these dates available. Which sets would you like? Rather than letting them have um, just full access to the calendar, you're giving them a few different options and that might force them, obviously, if they've got shutdowns or something that have been planned for a year and they decided to bring us in at the last minute, which tends to happen, we're stuck with their shutdown. But if we give them dates and tell them, you know, these are the dates we're available, that narrows it down to stuff that we actually, where we have guys available, equipment available, and we can start directing the, the calendar a little bit better. Um, verify all the equipment, the equipment to be tested. Um, you know, that's that's one of those things where I don't hear a lot of guys go through and say, okay, so according to the sales order I have, you know, we've got 56 breakers, we've got three different sets of switch gear, so on and so forth. And they, they may immediately come back and say, well, no, we've actually got, you know, another 26 breakers. If we can get those change orders done prior to even mobbing, um, we may have to, you know, do a little back and forth with sales as well. But we can be a lot better planned, uh, prepared, and ready to hit the ground running, and we'll make sure we have enough guys to complete it in the time frame, um, as well as equipment. Um, verifying all the needs, which is going to be your test equipment, manpower, do we need lifts, generators, lighting. Um, you know, a good example of that, we went out to Eastern Oregon, and three of us showed up. Uh, we only had one generator. They were supposed to be a completely black plant, and they weren't so it changed the entire scope of the way we we had our plan set up um, originally it was going to be the three of us split up and start testing relays we couldn't do that um, so you know everything changed and that's something that you have to know the the second you get on site the more planning you've done the better off you'll be but just understand that it's going to change it it almost always does um, training is another one we tend to miss a lot on the quoting side and that's something that we need to have the, the talk with the client right at the initial contact and see if we can't add for the training. If they all of a sudden come back and, oh, you've got, you know, the dams all up and down the Columbia, 
Every single one is in a different district, so we have to take, even though it's the exact same class, we have to take it in their their district. So we've got anti-terrorism training. We've got um, three or four that we do, and it can take you know anywhere between four and six hours to get through that training. So that's something that we really want to to hit on the very first contact is find out if any of that's necessary. Um, along with that, and I didn't add it on here, is laptop requirements. Um, we've had a couple of guys that have had to have their cameras drilled out just to get their laptop into those access areas. Well, I would rather not destroy a laptop. I'd rather go purchase a small, you know, a cheap laptop that we can throw the software we need on there um, and be able to keep those. You know, we know that up in Sumner, we've got quite a few naval bases where they have these these ridiculous uh, requirements on laptops. We can have a couple there in the shop and just keep reusing those for those projects. Um, confirming the dates and times and locations, that's another one that tends to be uh, to change. We all know that projects push or move up. Um, locations is a big one as well. Uh, asking for a map of the facility can always help when you're planning so you can show guys where they need to be, where the different gear is, along with one lines. Um, and then getting any additional documentation and drawings from clients. Those don't always get passed back to us from sales. Uh, sales doesn't always have them. They don't get them from the clients sometimes. And so we've got to do our due diligence and get as much as we can ahead of time. And then follow up your, this is, this is a big one, follow up your phone contact with a, a, a summary email. You know, hey, Bob, it was great talking to you today. I've got you down on the calendar for these dates, these times. Here's a list of the equipment. Uh, you know, you're providing the, the generator for the 480. Um, just give a summary, and that way we have that to fall back on if they say, well, no, we never agreed to that date or time, or you guys said you were bringing a generator, any of that. They That gives them a chance to, to respond to your email and say, no, we're not providing the generator, you guys are. Then we get to, then we can move that discussion along. Um, getting into the specifications and drawings a little bit more, you have to do an in-depth review of the specs. Um, I think most of us go through and highlight the stuff that, that really matters the most. Uh, lead, you know, you got to look for the key testing needs. It, uh, is there special equipment that's needed? And we got to start getting that stuff ahead of time, at least getting it slated to where we know we're going to have it available. Um, I can't tell you how many times there's last minute phone calls for different secondary kits in this company. And that's something we've got to work on getting a little bit better at. Um, look for report and documentation requirements. Those, those always tend to come up and, and bite us in the butt. Uh, I know that for the job that Joel and the guys are on today, they had different specifications and different uh, uh, limitations for some of their results. And so we had to go back through and redo the report. Um, now, if we, if we had done that and just gone off of the basic uh, results, then we could have had some failures. Now we've got to go back and try to get something planned to get, you know, shut down um, after it's been, you know, this was all new install. So now they've got to come back and say, okay, we got to plan a shutdown. We've got to go back out there. It's a, you know, three or four hour drive to get out there. So we, la we waste a lot of time doing stuff like that. Um, once you've uh, identified all those report and documentation requirements, that's got to get disseminated down to every guy on the project. So they know that, you know, here, these are the, these are the, uh, the results that they're looking for. It's going to be between, you know, two and a half percent, you know, minus two and a half percent and plus two and a half percent. doesn't matter what the manufacturer says. This is what we want to see for our tolerances. Um, reviewing the lotto plan or create a lotto plan. Um, a lot of times we rely on our clients to come to us with a lotto plan. And, you know, we assume they know the gear better than we do. And that's probably true. And the problem is sometimes you get complacent with that. I would rather have every single guy on the crew look over the lotto plan and review it and make sure that they don't see anything that's going to sneak up and get us. Um, so looking at a spec, look for stuff like the example below here where insulation resistance test, 100% of all conductors. And this, this happens to be for the project out in Japan, and it's going to be every single control wire is going to get measured. Uh, that adds a lot of time. 
Uh, next, you're going to go on to your calendar invitation. Um, they should be as detailed as possible. Uh, I put down here, we have the basic, um, you know, who, what, when, and where. We need to have the project number in there, who the project contact is, what the scope is, and more often than not, I'm seeing now where it says scope, see attached SO. And that's one of the best ways to do it. Put the SO in there, put the basic one lines in there. Um, if there's pertinent information in the spec that you want to disseminate down, throw that into the calendar invite. That way guys have access to it on site. That ends up being less questions for the guy running the project. You know, they have documentation to refer to. Um, having the per diem amounts in there and then any notes that, uh, that we want to add. Um, follow up with the text to determine the equipment needs and who is bringing what equipment. There's a lot of times we come from different areas. Uh, there's no reason to always have to load up for bear and take everything in the shop because now if there's someone back at that shop and they need something, it's, it's gone out on that project. So that comes down to the, you know, the effective communication between us to make sure we're, we're dividing up what needs to be taken out there and making sure we have everything covered. Um, on here is the, the minimal info that we just went over, and that's what should be in every single calendar every bite. Um, On-site planning. So whoever's running the project, uh, the best thing you can do, I know on the smaller jobs, this is this takes more time than it's probably worth if you're going out to do a couple of ground faults or, or a few switches, a few breakers, whatever the case is. Um, but if we've got a bigger plan, a bigger outage, um, bigger project, getting a testing schedule put together uh, just helps everything. Um, and we can put in our basic numbers, pad them a little bit to allow for moving from device to device or area to area and lay it out and give it to the guys and let them look at it and see, okay, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be. And if they get ahead of themselves, they go over and they start helping another team, um, you know, and working through every single device on that SO. Um, it can definitely be greatly affected by the client's needs, their plans, or their outages. Uh, for example, we had the, the mill down uh, in Southern Oregon where that guy planned his to the T. So on day one, it was we were shutting down these three electrical rooms, and we're going in and we're testing everything. But we had to be done by 6 a.m. So we had to, you know, divide up um, and disperse the team evenly so that we could have strong technical guys with weaker technical guys. Um, if you ever get a Derek on a project, you're going to put Derek out there to, to go Tasmanian Devil on gear. Put some other guys with him. If you, anyone that you've noticed that is a little bit slower or, you know, tends to take their time, put them with a Derek, um, you know, and let them, let them see how fast stuff can get done and get done the correct way. Um, so spreading that out and, and, just getting that knowledge from the strong technical guy down to the, you know, the need of one, that'll help a lot as well. The idea is to get everybody up, you know, bring everyone up to a better level every day that we're out there. Um, utilize people's strengths when there is a tight schedule. And if there's time in the schedule, put them on the testing they're less comfortable with. Um, but with some guidance, someone that already knows it, or you take time out and go over and at least you know, give them some time to show them that testing and then let them run with it. Um, I know that there's a lot of times we're out there and it's, we don't have time. You're going to put the, the best baker, breaker banger on the test set and you want them to get them knocked out as quick as you can. But there's other times, you know, Joey's on a project right now that has a lot more time built into it. And that's when you got to put guys out of their comfort zone and let them, let them learn and get better. Um, Lotto plans, this is one, I think I stole this from Matt, it was something for Hawaii. And taking the time to go through the one line and do notations like this, put in different color codes. You can do color codes by day or by system or whatever the case is. Um, this right here is worth its weight in gold when we go through and the client decides to change something, it's much easier to go in and look and say, okay, if I need this gear to be safe, these are the points we need to be locked out on. This is what we've got to do. Um, you know, we know we've got an emergency generator and an ATS over here, so we got to make sure that gets locked out. Um, getting every tech to look at this, understand the prints, and that's something I think we, we are lacking in is, 
when I sit down with guys with a print and they look at it and they can't identify what the different devices are. So we've got to put a little more effort into that, teach them, you know, how to look at the prints and how to look at power flow and understand where the back feeds could be coming from. And then they've got to understand, you know, when you heat up that PT and you left the primary fuse in, what happens? Um, so that's stuff that we all need to work on, on, on getting disseminated down to the, the less technical guys. Um, putting all this together, having the lotto in your calendar invite if it's already ready. If not, go back and add it to the calendar invite and send the update out. Um, it just makes it easy for everyone to find it in one place. Obviously, giant attachments aren't going to aren't going to be the the most feasible way to do it in the calendar invite. But sharing this information is well worth it. And print off, you know, a couple couple different sheets of your lotto plan so that we can hand them out. Guys can sit there and study them. Um, and then we should be ready to hit the ground running on the project. Anybody have anything to add or change or? Is anybody there? Yeah, it was pretty good, hey, Jason. Thank you. Yeah, it was damn good. And I'll send this out to everybody. Um, if you guys see changes you want to make or I honestly, this would be a good thing for all of us to to make changes on, and then let's send it out and show guys. You know, this is this is at least the cradle to grave prior to being on site. Yeah, nice presentation, Jason. Uh, fantastic job there. Um, there's a couple things. Uh, you know, everything that Jason said was spot on. And these are things that we can identify ahead of the project, and and I know that we're you know we're busy you know everybody's doing things but and you guys have heard me say this before you know can we afford to take the time to do this stuff my, my response usually is can we afford not to do it um these are the things that are going to increase proficiency it's going to increase our efficiency on site it's going to give our guys the advanced notice of what we have to do so you as a site lead or or whoever that might be once you get the ground you, you just start running and guys are running to where they need to go um, and, and so it really does behoove all of us. There's a couple of points I want to uh, touch on in, uh, in, in this presentation. One is, uh, as Jason alluded to, the sales order, you know, sales, they try to get it right, um, but sometimes we're missing stuff. And, and, you know, sometimes, you know, we can get change orders for this stuff. Sometimes we're kind of trapped without it. But it's still very important that we funnel that information, you know, funnel that information up through your regional managers to myself, and then uh, we, I have a weekly uh, meeting with uh, between all the VPs. We talk about these things, and this is a great example of something that I can bring up. Maybe we're not taking into account some of the things that we really need to. Um, and 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 so it, it, it's not just a isolated incident. It's something that's more global. It's more holistic. And so we can train, and and we all get better. <clears throat> and 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 I think. I think all of us would agree that our proposals have gotten significantly better than what they were a couple of years ago, and we continue to make improvements. We're not there yet, certainly, um, but we also, you know, not to throw stones or anything, we we have our own weaknesses as well. But this is a way that we can all learn, collectively learn, and and um, imp for improvement. Um, sharing the information, you know, again, communication is key. One of the things I really appreciate uh, in this presentation, uh, Jason, is is reaching out to the client, you know, verifying the scope and and doing that homework ahead of time. It's not just a quick call saying, "Hey, I got a sales order. You know, when do you want me out there?" It's really, you know, that's the start of a partnership, and and those are the things that create lasting memories. Following it up with an email, not just to that site lead, but you know, you know, whoever the stakeholders are. All of a sudden, they see that we're extremely responsive, and and uh, this is where the project's at. And other people may have uh, things that they're, you know, that that may be different that that particular person may not be privy to. So don't be afraid to CC people um, as we go through this. Overall, the, you know, I think that there's plenty of room for improvement. Um, we have other guys that that um, are leading smaller projects. You know, this is great information for them as well. I, I did record this uh, this training, and so I'll send that out. Uh, I agree with Jason. All of these trainings that we do week to week, 
these are things that we need to build on and, and create a library uh, of things that, you know, now we have a basis for it. Now we're starting to add things like, uh, you know, lessons learned from, from projects that went right and projects that may have, uh, have some weaknesses. So again, Jason, fantastic job. I appreciate you putting this together and, and uh, everybody, uh, their input. Well, and I will add the, uh, for like the lottos and the specs and all that stuff, if you're buried, reach out to your counterparts in other areas and say, hey, is there any way you could go through this spec and, and highlight stuff and, you know, maybe give me a quick summary? Um, you know, everybody gets buried at different times, and so we can easily do that. Um, and especially on the lottos, if you want to bring in, send it to every single regional, every single area manager and get everyone's feedback if it's something that's more technical um you know just a larger scope and lots of lots of uh lockout points there's no reason not to get more people involved and get more eyes on it it's it's well worth the you know the extra effort We all still there? Kind of wondering the same thing. I'll I'll print this to PDF and I'll send it out to to everybody to look over. Shoot me back notes or anything you want to see added to it, um, and we'll go from there. All right, thanks, Jason. Uh, anybody else have any other comments on today's trading? Okay, we'll go quickly around the horn. Uh